by the way, sorry, like I'm Brad. It's waving a knife around for no clear reason. Um, action, action. Hi, welcome back to my kitchen, Gabby's kitchen. I'm confident that I'm rolling. Today, I'm going to be making a pantry sandwich. Sandwich out of things that one might have lurking around in their pantry or refrigerator or their fermentation stations, okay? So the essence of a pantry sandwich is that you want to just kind of lean on the stuff that like chances are you have like a can of chickpeas and some bread. I mean, that's really the essence of what this is. Um, I had some nice salt packed capers that I soaked overnight because the salt packed ones are salty. Like you need to get that salt out of there. I'm just gonna do a quick rough chop on this. Ooh, those are so good. They're almost sweet. Wow. Ooh, mm. caper town, you know, here we go. So I have some celery I diced up, you know, just those clean pops of texture. Let's get a spoonful of Greek yogurt in there. Let's get some olive oil. I wanna start to season this with some salt. Solid, humble black pepper is also definitely your friend. Pinch of chili flakes. So about a tablespoon of lemon juice. So I wanna kind of make this into a bit of a dressing with some of that celery and caper business mm -hmm. in there. Now I have a one can of chickpeas just drained and that's it. Some little bit of something in there. What the hell is that? You don't want to have like any of that liquid from the can that's just kind of in there but not really contributing anything and then making this mixture a little bit too loose. So everything looks nicely dressed now, but we're not done. My trusty cocktail muddler. We've been um, using it as part of our nighttime clapping for healthcare heroes, kind of 7 p.m. kind of deal here. And this is one of the kids banging implements. I think we're just gonna give that a little rinse. So I want to kind of smash apart some of these chickpeas. It's just gonna make this mixture a little thicker and help it hold together in sandwich form. Also gonna throw a few celery leaves in. It has a very assertive flavor, but for something like this, where you really want your flavors to pop, it's a great way to go. I mean, it's good. Definitely have to like chickpeas, but oh, it's so good. Done. I'm gonna toast some bread. All right, hang tight. All right, we're just waiting on the toaster. Bread. Little bit of olive oil, just to bring a little additional richness to the sandwich. I try to keep pickled bread onions on hand. They work for literally any, virtually any dish. I'm gonna close this up, but we're gonna wrap it. You guys know me, you know I love a wrapped sandwich. Wrapping it really goes a long way. Get into it. Boom. What do you think? Here we go, taking a bite, going in. Mm. I think you have a lot of options to play around with, but I think this is a slamming sandwich you can make just with kind of pantry staples and stuff you have in your fridge ready to go. Mm. Couple bites. Lost one chickpea, no big deal. The wrapping really helps with that. I have not really been making lunch and mostly I've been surviving on a dried mango, which I'm on my second five pound bag of that during the day. But occasionally I do get a craving for tuna salad and I like to make tuna salad and then have it as a melt. And today I'm going to be making it on matzah because it's Passover. This is tuna in olive oil to drain it. Urgh. One thing I love is like one of these grippy things because I'm bad at opening jars because I have weak hands. God. God. Oh, I got it. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm dripping. Hold on. Okay. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna drain it into the trash because I don't like to pour oil down the drain or you could just like put it into a grease jar, which is like a thing my parents have. The good thing about tuna salad is you're adding so many other flavors and textures that it kind of, you know, you don't have to use the fancy stuff for this. Cutting celery is so easy. If you want to practice your knife skills, celery is a fantastic thing to use to learn and you can just make a whole bunch of tuna salad. Then shallot, any kind of raw oniony or garlicky thing like that. I would be pretty 
moderate because, you know, it packs a punch. I'm gonna do a very fine dice. So that's like, I don't know, a tablespoon maybe. These are bread and butter pickle chips. Great for hamburgers. Love these. I'm just gonna chop them up into the bowl. Um, now I'm gonna finely chop fresh dill. Dill is divisive. To me, there's very specific things that I want dill in. Tuna salad, potato salad, ranch dressing, that's for sure, or ranch dip. A bunch of black pepper, because why not? A couple dashes of hot sauce. Mayo, this is QP. You could use whatever your favorite kind of mayo is. Dijon mustard. I love the innovation of the squeeze bottles, right? It's so much better than the jar. Okay. So let me just mix this all together and see what it looks like. And then I'll correct by sight. I need more mayo. You know, I don't want a dry tuna salad. Sorry, I'm at the end of this bottle. Also a wedge of lemon. I'm also mashing it because I like when the tuna breaks down. So then you have this really uniform mixture. I don't know if you can hear this noise. That's the noise it should make. I actually might want to add a little olive oil. I think it has enough mayo, but it could use just a little more richness, just making it a little fancy. So. Here is my tuna salad. I'm very, very, very happy with that. If I had my pick of cheese options in the store, I would probably pick the pre-sliced cheddar just because that's so much easier. But here I am just cutting planks from a block, which will be fine. Thank you to the Palace Diner in Biddeford, Maine for inspiring me. They serve a big, thick wedge of iceberg on it. And so now I serve a big, thick wedge of iceberg on it because it's so delicious. So I have my matzah. I don't know, maybe not the preferred vehicle but it is Passover, as I said. Matzah is a unleavened Jewish bread. I shouldn't even really call it bread. It's really a cracker eaten around Passover. Really, it's a blank canvas for whatever you're gonna put on it. So I just did a layer of the iceberg and then tuna salad, generous layer. Then my planks of cheese. This whole thing goes onto the tray. Here's a little preview of the before can see that. And then into the toaster till the cheese is melted and then it's ready. I am gonna take it out of the toaster because the cheese is melted. I mean, nothing is really cooking. You just wanna melt the cheese like a blanket over the tuna. And there it is. Looks, I think, quite appetizing and delicious. Great news is it's lunchtime and here's my tuna melt on matzah. Crunchy iceberg on the bottom, creamy, tangy, crunchy tuna salad in the middle and melty cheddar cheese on top. What a great food. Our cat is literally watching me eat it. I'm so mad right now. Mmm. You know, the matzo is not bringing a lot to the table, but it's a good base, I would say. I'm not a bagel, you know? The sandwich that I'm going to make for you today is a play off of grilled cheese and tomato soup because my mom made me that when I was little and I love, 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 love grilled cheese sandwiches. Um, there is actually no Campbell's tomato soup here in Mazatlan. So it's going to be a jalapeno popper grilled cheese with a salsa chili de arbol kind of dipping sauce. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make the salsa. And I'm gonna put in three tablespoons of olive oil. I didn't show that to you, but that's the empty container of olive oil. This is chili de arbol. I just chopped them up and then I grated some garlic. I think I have two garlic cloves and three chili de arbol, which are super, super hot. So if you don't like hot, don't use as many as I did. I wanna slowly bring them up to heat. If you put this directly into really hot oil or into a really hot pan, you're just gonna burn everything and things are gonna get stuck to the bottom. Now everything is starting to sizzle. These are whole uh, tomatoes from a can. I'm just throwing them in there. I'm also going to add some water to this. That'll help the tomatoes just break down. The salsa I have on high, and I'm just gonna cook this down until the tomatoes are really tender. So now I'm gonna work on my sandwich. Regular sliced sandwich bread. This is, I think it's like multi-grain or whatever. That is what queso chihuahua looks like. It's a really good melting cheese. An equivalent would be like a Munster or Monterey Jack. I feel like it melts a little bit better if you grate it, but also, I'm gonna add some pickled jalapenos. If you can find carrots in your pickled jalapenos, I would definitely use them. They just add a little bit of sweetness. They're gonna nestle into all the little empty space where the grated cheese is, which is exactly what I want. Put the lid on it. All right, I'm going to turn this on. So that's about a tablespoon of butter, and I'm just gonna let this melt. You want a really low and slow situation. I'm also gonna sprinkle a little bit of salt on the melted butter because you get a really nice hit of salt and butter on the crust, and we're just gonna drop it down. 
It's not super hot at this point and it's totally fine. I'm gonna set my timer so that I don't forget. Three minutes is the perfect amount of time to give us a nice golden brown crust. You come with me. Crazy salsa de arbol. And look at that, that's what you wanna see. Like cheese just oozing out the side. I'm gonna drop another pat of butter in there. Now the pan is like super hot, so we gotta go quickly. Oh my God, it looks so good. It's super crispy, which is what I also really, really like. I'm gonna keep watching it because I don't want it to burn. That is the absolute worst when you like are babying a grilled cheese sandwich and then it fucking burns. Oh. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and move that off heat and let that sit and just smash my salsa, break up the tomatoes. So my sandwich needs about another minute just so I don't like burn my mouth off when I take a bite. I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt. It tastes like a really spicy tomato soup, which is kind of what I was going for. Grilled cheese and salsa de arbol. There it is. Oh yes, yes. Look at that, look at that, look at that. That Hell yeah. is a cheese pull. Ah, fuck. It's just, it's comfort mm. to me. All of my friends and my family are 2,200 miles away and I need something that reminds me of home and this is doing it right now, so. Make this sandwich. Do you have a name for the sandwich? You want to give it a name? No, what is it with you guys and the names? I just want a name. Just give me a name. I ain't there yet. It's going to have to happen organically. I like that. It's organic. You can't force that shit, Corey. Today I'm going to make one of my faves, okay? Something I riff on, you know? It's an open canvas. It's real nostalgia for me. I grew up, my mom, she made meatloaf, you know, sometimes for dinner. That's just what she did, you know? And uh, I don't know what kind of meat she used. I made a meatloaf yesterday out of elk and um, venison. So we sliced that up and we're gonna put it on a little white bread, cold, ice cold. But if we're gonna zhuzh it up a little, I got a little fermented, this is cucumbers and scallions and garlic and some spices. And this is a fermented radish and garlic and some scallions. I'm just gonna mince up a little bit, do a little bit of mayonnaise. And then we're gonna put it on the white bread. And we're gonna slice the little meatloaf, put it on there, boom, that's it, forget it. It's a home run. You got a little bit of white bread, nice, okay, soft. Not now, son. I need to locate the lollipops. I hope I didn't throw them away. Sorry, everyone, hold on one second. In the colander on the top shelf. Okay, All right, Griffy, let's go. Bye. Come on, Griffy. The one Griffin, <laughs> he says sandwich, some, how? Swamish. I want peanut butter and jelly swamiches. <laughs> oh, it's the funniest thing. Anyway, I'm gonna strain a little bit of the of the ferments. This is exhausting. Are we gonna get a little bit of? Oh, it's fragrant. And this one is fantastic. It's so good. I should sell it. I'm gonna chop that up. You know, I'm gonna do a little fine. Okay. Beautiful colors too. I'm really onto something with this. Perfect. We'll put that back in the bowl. So let's do it. A little bit of mayonnaise, a couple teaspoons. Start small. All right, let's get, let's get a little weird. I'm just gonna add a little hata of ketchup. And we'll do a little bit of black pepper. Let me taste it. This would be so good on a burger, which is basically what we're having, like a cold burger. Plowing forward, let me get the meatloaf. So I, I love those wild game meats. I kind of dig it a little thin like that, okay? On the bread, all right, take some notes here. This is very complicated. Elk, venison, some of the best meat, in my opinion. A little bit of ketchup, just a little bit on top. It's nice, and a little bit of black. Nice. You put that bad boy back on like that, okay? And there she is, all right, folks? Yeah, come on. You can't beat that. Pantry sandwich, perfecto. That's it, I'll take a bite. I really do like the crunchy little sauce, okay? Hope you enjoy it. Use what you got, you know? Whether it be some ferments, or some good old mayonnaise, okay? That's it, have fun, okay? Just have some fun. Huge fan of sandwiches. You know, I, I think for the most part, everyone should know how to make a, a passable sandwich. I'm talking about something like a little bit, a step up from a grilled cheese, no hate. Rick Martinez made a grilled cheese. I'm sure it was amazing. So I'm making a breakfast sandwich. It's a classic bacon, egg, and cheese with hot sauce. I'm gonna throw some scallions in my eggs because I feel like it. I also am going to use a homemade English muffin. It just so happened that I had everything to 
make them. So that's what happened there. So I'm gonna take the cut sides of these and I'm going to butter them with some unsalted butter. And then I'm going to toast these in a cast iron skillet just until they're kind of crisped up. In the meantime, I am going to open up my bacon. I'm just gonna tuck them into my muffin skillet. And if I'm lucky, they will render out some of the bacon fat, which will run off into where the muffins are toasting. Okay, so I have a small nonstick skillet heating on the front burner. I'm gonna drop a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of butter and let that melt. Meanwhile, I'm gonna take two eggs, crack them into a bowl, season these with a little bit of salt and cracked pepper. You're more kind of going for a flat egg that you'll then fold up. I don't know what you would call that, like bodega style maybe? I'm doing that rather than scrambling it because I just feel like it's a slightly neater eating experience in the end. You know what, I need chopsticks. I have to say, I am such a fan of cooking anything with chopsticks, but especially bacon. But in the meantime, my eggs are, you can tell like they're already setting up in like a flat pancake kind of situation. At that point, I'm just going to like lift a corner of the cooked egg and then I'm gonna let the runny egg run underneath just to let it keep cooking. This is exactly where I want them to be. There are patches of it that are, that are still slightly runny, but the underside is totally cooked. I'm gonna fold the egg in half and then I'm going to fold that half in half again, like that. And then I am going to turn down the heat to low. One sheet of American cheese right on top. And then I am going to pop a lid on this. It's just to trap the steam and quickly melt the cheese on top. In the meantime, my muffin is about to burn. Very nice. My bacon's also about to burn. Really everything's about to burn. I am going to drain my bacon briefly on a paper towel. I think my cheese is melted. That's like the weird thing about American cheese is you can't really, you can't really tell when it's melted or solid but I can tell that it's melted. I'm going to slide it onto my bottom muffin. I did not really give consideration to the size. So we'll put scallions on top of that and then my bacon and then some hot sauce closed. It's a little unwieldy, but I think it'll do. I mean, that's basically what you're going for. I just have a very soft spot in my heart for the egg sandwich, whether it's from the corner bodega or from like kind of a nice brunch spot so buttery in the best possible way. It's so, it's so good. I didn't have to go out and get anything for this. Frozen shrimp is something that I always have on hand in my freezer back in New York. Um, my parents had some in the freezer here. To me, it's one of those things you can just keep around to use for soup, pasta, um, you know, any kind of stir fry or maybe a shrimp salad sandwich. Let's get to it. Um, you may notice that there's been a camera change here. I've recruited my little sister Claire to help film. So there are now two Claire's in the BA cinematic universe. Come here. Salt water with a whole lemon cut in half, squeezed in there, and that is boiling now. So what we're gonna do is take shrimp that I have defrosted and I deveined them um, and taken the shells off, except for the tail. We're gonna turn the heat off. The thing about poaching is that you want it to be a gentler cooking that keeps things tender. And we're just gonna cook these for like three minutes and you're gonna keep it covered. In the meantime, we are going to toast some bread. For this, I like any kind of soft bread. I don't like this on sourdough or anything you have to like chew through. This is just some butter melted in a cast iron. The thing here is that I'm only gonna to toast one side of the bread. Soft side allows the shrimp salad to like sit in there and stay in the sandwich. These shrimp are looking nice and pink. So we're just gonna drain them in the sink. Bread, nice and golden, toasty. Okay. So we've got our bread and our shrimp. And now I'm gonna put the camera back on the stand. So Claire, you are relieved of your duty. Okay, well, Delaney here. Uh, you might notice that the words that I'm saying do not match with the words that my lips in this video are saying. That's because I messed up the audio. So without any further ado, I'm gonna dub this video clip. I'm taking my chopped shrimp. You want the shrimp to be about the size of a nickel or a dime, not super big, not super small. Uh, you wanna be able to scoop the shrimp salad. And I'm mixing it with mayonnaise and olive oil. And then I'm adding salt, uh, chipotle for a little bit of floral heat, a little bit of Dijon mustard, onion and garlic powder, just for a deeper, sweeter flavor, black pepper to brighten the whole thing up even more. After that, I'm adding 
some capers for a little bit of brininess. And then I'm taking my whole salad, putting it on the toasted challah and adding some thinly sliced white onion and iceberg lettuce on top. I just like a little bit of crispiness to my sandwiches and both of those are really good in the texture department. I'm kind of bummed that the original audio wasn't there. I was making good jokes. You guys would have loved it. I promise you it was top notch material, but we still have the shrimp sandwich and damn, that is a good looking sandwich. Look at that, shrimp salad killer time for lunch okay looks like my mic is working again i'm back it's a nice uh, transportive sandwich being in a dock during the summer in like maine somewhere in new england but in reality i'm in my parents kitchen in south jersey oh, i just lost some shrimp okay look you can make a sandwich out of literally anything it is the most democratic food in the world uh two slices of apple and a slice of cheddar cheese cheddar sandwich on apple bread two slices of cheddar cheese one slice of an apple Apple sandwich on cheddar bread. Make one. One of my favorite sandwiches of all time is egg salad. And I eat it usually more as like a tartine, but I did happen to make focaccia and I'm gonna make an egg salad sandwich on this focaccia today. I have six boiled eggs here and I boiled them for nine minutes, which is almost all the way hard boiled with a little bit of a jammy center. No gray egg yolks in my egg salad, please. Some people like to chop their eggs and I like to tear them um, because I think it's prettier. Little bite size, probably one inch-ish pieces. But if you like it finely chopped, finely chop it. I don't care. Okay, cornichon, um, which are my favorite kind of pickle. Uh, if you don't have cornichon, I've definitely made this with just like a kosher dill pickle, and that is quite all right. Corny's in. And then capers. Egg yolks are pretty rich. Mayonnaise is obviously pretty fatty. I'm also going to add olive oil. So it's nice to think about things that will kind of break that up. So a rough chop on the capes. We're just doing this to taste. So if at the end we decide we want a couple more capers, we'll put another couple more capers in. And then I'm doing a mix of both... Dijon and whole grain mustard just because I love mustard. I'm just gonna do like a generous tablespoon of mayonnaise, but I'm really not looking for like a mayonnaise -y egg salad. We'll give it, we'll give it two, we'll give it two. Two big TBSPs. And once it starts to combine, a good amount of salt to season these eggs up. So this is where we're at. Okay, it's not totally there, it's a little dry looking. And that's when I'm gonna start drizzling in olive oil. And then I have a bunch of herbs in my fridge. I have cilantro and mint right now and also parsley. So whatever you have, use it and just sort of tear the herbs. Chives, also awesome in egg salad. Oh my God, dill. All right, cutting my lemon in half, giving it a squeezy. I sometimes add lemon zest also. Some more oil. Okay, she's looking nice and saucy. Um, I'm gonna taste it. It's great. Focaccia, serrated knife, and cut it in half, split this in half. Here we go. See how many it makes. It makes two, I can tell. That's good, because there's two of us here. I'm giving it some fresh herbs for you, because you deserve it. All right, there she is. There she blows. The egg salad pantry sando. I guess you want to peek in there. Ooh, it's pretty open-faced. Okay, I'm gonna cut this in half to make it easier. Mmm! C'est délicieux. Do I sound like Julia Child? Really yummy. So like right now that we're all inside, you know, most of us have a few extra ingredients in the pantry that we have collected over the years or stuff that we always have, you know, handy. I found two, not one, but two cans of artichoke hearts in my pantry that they were sitting there for a while. They're not expired. So I'm gonna cut them in eights, basically. This takes a while. You know, we have time, we have nowhere to go, so. <laughs> Here I go cutting, doing my bear claw. I'm gonna chop the parsley. Not a great sandwich for the first date because you're gonna get all that parsley in your teeth. So I have these piquillos that they came in a jar, preserved. They're kind of on the sweet side. 
cut them in long strips and put them back in the bowl. So I have my artichokes. First I'm gonna put a little bit of salt, black pepper, tiny, tiny bit of red pepper flakes, and some dry oregano. Gonna use a neutral oil, and then I'm gonna finish up with olive oil. I also gonna add some lemon juice. Just put a little bit. A little dash of vinegar. Well, I'm gonna spare my last olive oil. There you go. I have my bread in the oven. I didn't want my bread to be completely toasted and turn into a hard thing. I just basically warm it up for a few minutes. I'm gonna just put a bunch of these guys here. It's messy. It's not something that you're gonna be able to eat sitting on your couch. But who cares? If you live along like I do, nobody's watching. A little bit of these peppers. I'm gonna shave the parmesan a little bit. If you don't have parmesan, you can use any other hard cheese that you like. Last but not least, just gonna put some lettuce to make it fresh and crunchy. And then you top it with the other piece of bread. Ooh, it smells so good. That's my sandwich. Wait, let me flash, fl fluff it up a little bit because I have one of these. It needs one more artichoke on this side, so. Oh, shit, cheese down. Sorry. Ah, what about now? <laughs> Here is my pantry sandwich. I'm so proud of this. Can I open the wine now? Voila. There you go. Ready? Mmm. Oh my God, guys. When we get back to the kitchen, I'm going to make you this. It's delicious. Bon appetit. Hello everybody, it's me, Emil, and I'm here in my home kitchen. Like that? All right, so we are gonna make a pantry sandwich right now. The neighborhood that I live in has a couple of really good um, Bangladeshi like little corner stores with freezers that are just full of extremely special groceries and one of which is these frozen paranthas, buttery, flaky flatbreads and they're actually like fully raw right now. This is like a double smoked Hungarian kielbasa which keeps for a long time so I almost always have some of this and can I put ramps in the sandwich? This is like very show-offy but I've been doing a lot of wandering in the woods which I would encourage anyone who can do to do and I've got this gigantic bag of ramps and then I'm just gonna take this kielbasa and slice this into a few pieces. This kielbasa is like already fully cooked so you're really just like heating it up, browning it. A little bit of sauerkraut, which is like my back pocket vegetable. We got this hot cast iron pan. I've been preheating it for, you know, three or four minutes. Take our frozen paratha. We don't need any oil or anything like that just because there's so much butter already in this. And we're just gonna slap this. We're just gonna wait until this starts to turn kind of like translucent a little bit. And that's how we're gonna know that it's time to flip it. It's starting to like bubble a little bit. And I wish you could smell it. It smells so buttery and delicious. Oh, like my one painted nail. I like it really nice and brown, almost like a little bit burnt. Now that this is pretty much done, get that onto our plate right there. I'm just gonna get a little bit of olive oil in here and then get our slices. This pan is like smoking hot right now. Mmm, kielbasa cam. So I'm just gonna transfer all of that back to our platter. And then we've just got a little bit of fat left over in the pan, which we're gonna use. We're gonna throw our ramps in. Just get a little heat on them. And then just gonna throw our sauerkraut on. So we don't really need to cook this so much, just heat it through. So that is pretty much done. And then we're gonna take all of this back to the table and build our sandwich. I refuse to eat a sandwich that doesn't have mayonnaise on it. And then we've got some mustard, some nice grainy Dijon mustard. Mix that together. I'm gonna add a little bit of black pepper to make it feel like it's more of a thing. Paratha, just add a nice swipe of the sauce. Gonna lay our pieces of kielbasa in there. That little rampy business on top. Sandwich. Mm. Kraut world. Beautiful. Now do you want me to bite it? That bread is so good. Mm. It's buttery and flaky. It eats the hell out of a hot dog bun. Everyone's pantry is different. This is what I got going on in mine. And um, this is my pantry sandwich. Does it look, like this is me spreading my legs. Does it look weird? Like that's straight up. What's natural? 
Ugh. Is that a handsome a little bit? <laughs> uh, could you be any more handsome, please? Thank you. 